So the first thing to do is to download KiCad. So this is the KiCad website. And I'm going to get the latest version for Windows. The next thing to do is to install KiCad from the downloads folder. Hit next, hit next, hit install. At the very end of the KiCad setup, make sure you check to install FreeCAD. And press finish. Hit download now. Get it for Windows. Now install FreeCAD. Double click on FreeCAD from your downloads folder. Click next to continue to install FreeCAD. Click next. Click next. Click next. Click next. Click next. Click finish to complete installing FreeCAD. Now I like to do auto routing when I use KeyCAD because it makes it easier to do some prototyping. So you want to go to the free routing website and you want to download the layout editor package. Now I'm using Windows, so I'm going to download the latest Windows version of that. Now if the layout editor installed. You want to load that now into your system. So go into the downloads directory. I'm going to execute the MSI file for that. Once layout is installed, you want to go to the directory where the free routing Java icon is located at. So we're going to go there. So we'll go to this PC on the C drive, the program files x86, and we're going to try to find our layout editor, and then we're going to go to the bin directory, and we're looking for this free routing.jr file, and we're going to make a shortcut and locate that on the desktops. So we're going to use this a little bit later to do our uh, auto routing. So we'll put that there and use that later. So one thing we need is the DigiKey footprint library. So we're going to get that. That's a third party library. And uh, I believe uh, we could go to the KeyCAD website and go to third party libraries. And there's a link here uh, to, to the GitHub page to get that. So we're going to go get that. So we hit our uh, code and download zip. So we're going to download the zip file and um, I believe it's uh, all downloaded. It's not that big of a file. So we'll go um, to where that's located in downloads. So we'll go look at that. So we, get, we have that. So we're, we're going to move that to our uh, KiCad directory over here and we're going to move that and we're going to extract it and we're going to extract that now 
So once that's extracted, we're going to take a look inside uh, the DigiKey uh, Library Master. And these are where the footprints are. So you can see there's a lot of files in there. So what we're going to do now to load these libraries is launch KiCad and go to the footprint editor. And we're going to go add a library. So it's to the project. So we have this, uh, we're going to select the folder here where all these footprints are. So we select that and now they're all loading in. So there was one footprint we had in this design uh, that wasn't part of the standard library, but it was in the DigiKey library. I believe it was a switch uh, over here. It was uh, SW5 in this design. Uh, so it was um, uh, one, of the, one of the switches in here. So ho hopefully uh, that'll load in now. I believe it's uh, uh, one of these switches here. So now that we have the DigiKey footprint library loaded, uh, we're going to launch KiCad. And we have a schematic in here, so I'm going to open the schematic. And this is a design for an 8031 microcontroller computer. And it has, um, this is the main 8031 chip. Uh, so I believe I did have to uh, make some of these, uh, make the footprints. Uh, basically, I took ones that were already in there, a 40-pin device, and then updated it. So there are, were some uh, additional libraries I did have to add here. But we're not going to go into this in this lesson. We're just going to go through the process of if you had a schematic and you wanted to auto route a printed circuit board. So we do have the schematic in here. There's um, a couple of components in here. There, these, this is um, uh, one of the ROMs, and this is some of the RAM. Uh, this is data RAM, and this is an instruction ROM. And there's a, a latch here and a decoder here. Um, couple things there's a logic chip and a lot, lot of headers uh, LED some resistors so what we want to do we, we had uh, completed the schematic we want to make a printed circuit board now so we're gonna go uh, just make sure um, that the footprints are all signed uh, so in this case I believe they're all signed so there is a way to look at that uh, it's uh, run footprint assignment tool. We just want to run that and make sure our uh, footprints are assigned. And um, so for every component, we have a, a footprint and there isn't anything empty here. So that looks good there. So we're going to hit OK there. So the next thing to do yeah, is to go and create a printed circuit board. So we're going to open the printed circuit board right here. So we click on that. And hopefully our uh, so it's going to create a printed circuit board. And OK, so right now it's blank. So what we have to do is import all of our parts to the schematic. Uh, previously, they had a net list and KiCad, but it's changed a little bit. So now you have to hit this thing here. And then just hit update. There's no warnings or errors, which is good. So it means there's a footprint for every part. So we're going to hit uh, update PCB. So and close this. So that's good. So it has all of our parts. So I'm just going to put them here in the corner. The next thing, the first thing you want to do is make the edges for our board. So I'm going to put this in the corner here for now. And then we'll go uh, do the edges. So the first thing we want to do is draw the outline of our board. And this board is 4.25 inches by 4.4 inches. And you want to first make sure all these parts are going to fit into the board. So we're going to do the edge uh, cuts of the board. So the first thing we want to do is select our edge cut layer and then the line tool. And we're going to zoom in here. Maybe uh, we'll draw it in this area of the schematic. So we'll zoom in here a little bit. So the one thing we want to make sure is our X and Y uh, is some known point because we're going to draw a nice straight line. So we're going to start at 3.5. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll start uh, 3 and 6. So we use this as a double check. So we're going to click there. 
and we're going to start moving till we get our line as 4.25 inches. Might have to zoom out a little bit. So we're 4.25, nice and steady there. Click. Now we want to come up 4.4 inches. We have to zoom out a little bit. So maybe uh, zoom in a little bit. So we want to make sure we're nice and straight. So we got 4.4 inches. And we're going to come over 4.25 inches again. And then we're going to come down and complete the rectangle, 4.4 .4 inches. So there you go. We got our edge cuts. We'll go back to the copper layer and the select tool. Okay, so now we want to move our parts into our board to the desired location that we'd like to move them. So is all we have to do now with the select tool on is grab the part. And you'll see it'll change a different color. And then you just drag it to where you would like it to be. And grab the next part and drag it to where you would like it to be. And drag the next part. When it changes colors, move it to where you'd like it to be. And one thing you could do is if you press the R key, it rotates. So you press it each time it, you push it, it turns off. Counterclockwise by 90 degrees, so I'm hitting R, 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 so that's very handy. So I'm going to move the parts to the desired location, and when I'm done that, I'm going to come back and uh, move forward with this design. Now that we have the parts in the approximate location that we'd like them to be, we wanted to add some mounting holes for some standoffs and for some switches. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the Browse Foot Point footprint libraries and over here there is a mounting hole so we're going to start with the 3.2 millimeter one and we need to add four of these to the corners for our standoffs so we're going to double click on that and we'll put uh, those in one and we're going to uh, get our select tool then copy and paste into the four corners. So there's a, another one. I didn't quite want that type. I wanted the whole thing here. So uh, we're going to uh, hit our select tool and grab the whole thing and uh, copy and paste. So there's another one. We're going to hit paste, make another one. We need four of these and make paste to make another one. So I'm going to go put these in the corners. So one thing that these mounting holes need is they uh, they can't have, they have to have uh, references with different names. So we're going to go click on that and uh, make sure that the, uh, the names are, are different on these. So here's the reference. We're going to call this hole 01 for this type of hole. And then we're going to call this one O2, and this one we're going to call O3, and this one we're going to call O4. Now that we have these mounting holes in a good location, we're going to add some mounting holes here for some of the switches that need to be installed. So this one is a, a 6.4 millimeter uh, mounting hole. So got to find that one. And uh, here it is right here. So double click on this. And hopefully it'll go into our design. And I don't see it there, but let's see. I think you have to, oh, okay. You have to double click here. There it is. So we need three of these. So we're going to put uh, three of these in here. And we're going to um, select this. 
and we're gonna uh, copy and paste two more of them paste paste and we got to give these different names also so we have uh, we're up to four so this one we'll call whole, uh, whole number six I could get on the name there so we'll zoom in here a little bit so this I mean this one's going to be 05 This one's going to be 06. And this one's going to be 07. So now I'm going to get them. Now that I got the holes in the right position, I want to uh, try to get my uh, front sill screen worked out. So trying to get some of these, uh, the names of the parts on the front sill screen. Uh, so I'm just going to select the front silk screen um, find it here let's see uh, we have uh, silk screen front silk screen okay it's yellow okay so we want to get some of these names uh, just to help us say the name of this uh, this uh, name here so we're going to zoom in here a bit and I'll click on that and so right now it's on the fab, so that doesn't show up as anything, but we want to get this on the on the front silk screen. So we hit OK. Uh, so uh, we got the U5. See how that changed yellow? So now if we get this uh, 373, okay, that's the 373. Uh, and uh, let's try to get uh, the next the next thing. See how it turns yellow? We'll get this up on the front silk screen and hit OK there and so I'm going to do that for all the parts that I will and move them around to the positions uh, that would be best to see them in so I'm going to do that now now that we got some of the names taken care of for our front uh, silk screen I wanted to add some additional messages so the way you do that is you add a text item in the silk screen so I'm going to put all uh, this is uh, my 8031 sys 07 and I'm going to put my not no name in there and a worth two so I'm going to get uh, all the messages in there that uh I want to put onto the silk screen, and um, I'm going to uh, see that font. I'm going to uh, left justify that. I want to edit that. I have the select tool and left justify that, and I'm going to move it down here the space um, that isn't too busy so I'm going to add the rest of the messages now and move forward now we have the silk screens worked out and we have the parts in a pretty good location I'm going to use the 3d viewer to take a look at it so we're going to take a quick look at this so far uh, we don't have any uh, traces laid out yet uh, just checking some of the silk screens and the messages and seeing how they look and we could uh, rotate this around a little bit uh, on the back we don't have any messages on this board so the mounting holes look pretty good So we'll close the 3D viewer. That looks pretty good. Now that the messages look pretty good, we're going to try the auto router here. Uh, since this is a prototype, uh, we're not as concerned with the layout of the traces. So the auto router would be a pretty good way to uh, design it to save time. That's uh, the nice thing about this is uh, to save all the labor of trying to route it. That would take uh, a lot of man hours to do. So in order to auto route it, what we have to do we have to export 
our structured DSN files. So we're going to do that. So we hit uh, export that and we're going to save that using the default name. Okay. So now what we do is we get out of uh, the PCB editor, uh, KiCad, and we want to run this uh, free routing program. It's called freerouting.jar. So this is a uh, I believe a Java applet, a Java uh, function. So we're going to go pick our DSN file that we had in this directory that we just created. So we're going to hit open. That's loading that. So we'll zoom in here. And uh, so we want to begin the routing. Now this could take some quite some time to do. So we're just going to let this run and uh, with its defaults and uh, see how it does and come back later. So we started, and you can see it's starting up now, and it's taking its first shot at it. It's doing its first pass. So it uh, starts putting a lot of vias in. I think what the program does is it tries to minimize the vias. So you can see it running. It's uh, pretty interesting uh, to watch this as it tries to find the best way, the optimal way to route this board. So we'll come back later and take a look at this when it's completed, if it does complete. It is up to pass 13 now, and it's uh, still going on doing the routing. Interesting to watch this. So we'll watch this for a minute or two. We have a V account of 44 right now. Okay, now you can see the post route is completed. We have 15 vias, and um, it looks like it was uh, done successfully. So the next thing we need to do is export the um, Spectra session file. So we'll hit that, and we'll save the rules. So. Um, I believe we did that. Yeah, uh, it was written into hopefully the proper directories. Uh, so we'll go check our uh, our directory to make sure it's in there. Go check that real fast. So uh, yeah, it looks like it's it's in there. So once that's done, we can now get out of uh, the routing auto routing tool it took maybe about an hour or so for it to do that so we'll exit out of this now and continue on now that the auto router is done we want to bring the traces into our printed circuit board uh, editor so the way we do that is we import that session file that was generated so you hit import spectra session and we'll click on the session file and hit open. So now, now you see all the routes. So let's say you didn't quite like what it did and you want to get rid of all these routes. So then what you do is you select the whole thing and you right click on it and then you hit select and filter selected items and you just have include tracks and vias. And you hit OK, and then you hit Delete, and they're all gone. So anyway, let's um, load that session file back in, because I believe that was OK. And so we'll load that back in. So that'll bring all of our, our tracks. Now, I notice here it says Unroute is 221. It should say 0, so I believe there's some kind of issue with uh, KiCad. So we're, we'll just save that and... Get out of this one time. I uh, used to work pretty good, but uh, maybe there's some kind of bug in it now. But anyway, we'll get out of this and we'll go back to the uh, open it up again. And okay, so now it says I'm routed zero, so everything is good here. We have a good route. Everything is connected. So that's great. So so now we have our board. So we'll go 
take a quick look at this board with the 3D editor just to see what this looks like. Here's the 3D viewer and we could zoom in and, and we could see a lot of the traces in there. And we'll uh so that looks that looks pretty good there. So at this point I would say yeah maybe the board is done. Uh, I would say if you're doing this for the first time to save the Gerber plot files with these type of traces because it's easy to uh if you have an error an error it's easy to cut one of these with a file and then jumper it with a little wire wrap wire in case there's some kind of error something got missed and you don't you know you paid a lot of money for this board and you don't want to waste your money so it's always suggest to stop it at this point and generate the Gerber plot files but if it's more of a final design then you can do um, a reverse plane type of design which is a little bit better up against noise so we'll we'll look at that next on how to do that at this point, you might want to make the Gerber plot files. I would say if it's your first go around with the design is to do it this way and uh, not do a, a reverse plane where you have a lot of copper and these traces would be the negative, uh, which helps to keep the noise down. I would go suggest going with this design if it's your first go around because it's easy to do uh, take a file and cut a trace and do a jumper. If for some reason maybe not everything got routed, where there's something missing, where there's an error here, you could cut it and then do a jumper. Maybe something got swapped, so you could cut this and this and then swap the wires with some wire, wrap wire uh, uh, to get around an error. But if it's more of a final design, then maybe I would suggest to do the reverse plane. That helps keep the noise down. So the way, the way you would go about that is... Um, yeah, we could look at the board and use this uh, add a fill zone, add a fill zone to do that. So we'll click on this and then uh, you go up here on the select the corner of the board and then double click on it. So we'll, we want to do both the front and back layer. This is a two layer board. So you have to select something that the, the ground plane, uh, sometimes it's power, but usually it's ground. So we'll select the ground there. So we'll hit uh, OK. Now, not, not every area may be reversed. Uh, it has to meet these properties. So you could adjust these if you have real tight uh, traces uh, to reverse them. Or uh, this is maybe what's suggested by the uh, PC board manufacturer. But anyway, we're going to hit OK here. So now we go around and we select the outline of the board. You select the area you want to fill. It, it might, uh, in our case, we want the whole board to be filled. So we'll select the whole board. Uh, in our case, so select that. So you get this red outline now. So now you right click on that and you hit zones and you hit fill all zones. So now it's going to fill all the zones and you'll have this reverse ground plane. It did it in more of the open areas, but some of the areas that are tighter. It didn't do it so uh, we'll we'll go save that let's go take a look at that with the 3d viewer and um, so yeah now you could see you know this reverse plane effect which may help to keep the noise down on the board on the board now in these tight areas it didn't do it there may be some ways to adjust the uh, the numbers there and this is the back of the board so you could see yeah, it has this reverse plane and this is all ground we tied it to ground. You could tie maybe one side to power and one side to ground. Uh, there's various uh, approaches you could take on doing that. So I want to show you that. So let's say you didn't like the job that uh, the fill did and you want to reverse it and you're maybe not at the point where you could do undos. So uh, a way to do that is to um, I'll show you how to do that in case you don't like this and you want to try something different and you want to undo this fill. What you do is you uh, yeah, right click on the filled area, grab a little piece of it, and then you go to zones and then you hit un unfill all zones. So now, now it reversed it. So, so it went back to the regular traces, but I want my design to have the, um, this is a final design. So I want it to have the, 
reverse traces using the default settings. So now I could just go back in here again and um, select this again and go to zones and then fill all zones. So that'll put it back in again. And so at this point, I'm ready to do the Gerber plot files. So uh, we'll do that next. Okay, so to do the Gerber plot files, what you do, uh, you want to save your final design and go to File and then Plot. So we want to generate all these files. I believe there's uh, 11 files that it generates. I guess um, hopefully uh, it'll go to the right output directory. So we hit Plot and hopefully that went, all those files went to the default directory. And then the next thing you need to do is generate the drill files. So we'll generate the drill files. And and we want, um, it generally uh, makes two files. Uh, so we'll do that. So we'll hit generate drill file. So one is the plated and one's the non-plated because we have uh, some holes just for our switches. So we'll hit close here. And so we generated our Gerber plot files. So here are our, our Gerber plot files over here and our drill files over here. So generally it says uh, 12 items selected and hopefully um, this is what you would send to the manufacturer of your printed circuit board. Hopefully these would be compatible with your manufacturer and uh, this is what you would send them. A lot of times you just put them into a zip file and you send them over uh, to the manufacturer. Now, KiCad also has a Gerber viewer and there's other Gerber views you could get as a second check. So you could uh, open this Gerber viewer to look at the results of these files. And I believe what you do is you um, you want to open the Gerber plot files. So that's these uh, that end in uh, these uh, GRB. So, so we'll open those. And then we want to get the, uh, the drill files also. So you go file, open, uh, Exelon drill files. So that's that's these two here. So this is another checker you can look at. Uh, you can turn these layers off and look at each one uh, individually. It looks like there's like 11, 11 things in here. So this is our, our back layer. And this is going to be our front layer. Uh, so some of these things, these are our, our solder masks. Uh, the interesting is to look at the holes. So these are our non-plated holes. So we have some manning holes and some holes for the switches. And these are our plated holes. And you could turn these on a little bit of time. Our silk screen. Uh, some of these uh, don't do anything. These are our masks. We'll turn these on a little bit at a time. And this is a good check. You could sometimes go through these traces and manually figure out is this good or not. So these are the files. There's 11 files here that generally your uh, printed circuit board manufacturer needs. Sometimes they don't want the edge cuts. You give them those dimensions and that'll work out. Well, thanks for listening to this.